Hey everybody and welcome back. In this episode we're going to do something very simple and yet completely annoying. So for some reason Microsoft decided not to make adding networking to Hyper-V server simple and easy. It's really not that bad but compared to VMware it kind of is. So I'm gonna start here with Hyper-V on Hyper-V virtual machine. I recently did this for the server I'm running on so I decided to do a short video on it. After creating my new VM, we need to head into settings to verify firmware to boot from DVD. Uh, we have 4 gigs of RAM, 2 virtual processors, as well as our DVD drive mapped. Secure boot is enabled for Windows, memory is set to dynamic, and so forth. Looking at our network adapter, we have it configured and connected to our virtual switch. We can enable VLAN identification and add to a specific VLAN for this VM. Let's say VLAN 1000. When attempting to add a new network adapter, we'll see that we are unable to add hardware because this machine is currently managed by failover clustering. So we'll head over to Server Manager and open the tool Failover Cluster Manager. Failover Cluster Manager works pretty much the same way here as it does with you know, any other clustered resource. We have our cluster and then we have our roles. You'll see here all of our virtual machines I have running and they're managed by FC. Keep in mind you don't have to use FC to create and manage VMs. This is only if you have remote shared storage and want high availability between machines. After opening up settings we now have the ability to add hardware such as a new network adapter. Once we have done so, we'll be taken to its configuration and to connect a virtual switch, as well as assign a VLAN if necessary. After configuration is done, we hit apply and OK, and it's time to connect to and start the VM. I'm going to be fast forwarding this part and we'll move on to the VNIC vSwitch setup. Now that we're in the Hyper-V server, we are required to input an administrator password. Once logged in, we are greeted by sconfig, Microsoft's Ease of Initial Configuration dialog. By clicking 8, Network Settings, we see that we have two network adapters, but no method of teaming them. So we need to head over to Command Prompt. We can verify the IP config here and then enter PowerShell Configuration. Once in PowerShell, we can do a few commands. Get Net Adapter will list the adapter with various information. Keep in mind, PowerShell does support tab to complete the command. Get Net Adapter shows us the adapter's name, interface description, index, status, MAC address, and its link speed. To create a team, we need to use the command new net lbfo team dash name gig team dash team members and we can type ethernet and ethernet2. By using this command, we are creating the team gig team with team members. Team nickname also is gig team. We'll be using a teaming mode of switch independent and the load balancing algorithm as transport ports. Let's hit no for a second and take a look at our options. By typing get-help and the command new-net lbfo team, we will get the help page for this command. We have the ability to specify the name, team members, team nick name, teaming mode, load balancing algorithm, LACP timer, sim session, throttle limit, and other various items. What we want to be concerned with more specifically is the teaming mode, which can be static, switch independent, and LACP. Static basically means teaming is on. Typically the switch you are connected to would also need to be teamed. Switch independent doesn't take any switch configuration into account, and LACP is for when you want the Hyper-V teaming and the switch you are connected to to communicate and negotiate the teaming. In my opinion, LACP is the best option because the switch and the server can account for each other's status. 
If a switch port or Hyper-V port go down, the heartbeats will cease and it will shut down its own port accordingly. The load balancing algorithm determines how the switch will send its frames. Transport ports will use the TCP UDP ports to determine which interface. IP addresses will use the source and destination IP addressing. MAC address is source and destination MAC. And then we have Hyper-V port and dynamic. Keep in mind what the algorithm is doing. It sets whatever algorithm you choose and binds it to that particular uplink. As an example, for IP addressing, say you have two servers and one computer communicating. Communication from each server will have a different source IP address, but will have the same destination IP address getting to that computer. If you use the IP addresses algorithm, you will use both uplinks because the IP communication flows are different and will map to each of those uplinks. Additional connections will round robin bind to whichever uplink is chosen. For networking based teaming, I typically like to use IP address and port, but we don't have that option here, so let's redo the command and use dynamic for now. We do get an error with this command, however. The only valid load balancing algorithms allowed for virtual machines is transport ports, IP addresses, and MAC addresses so we must choose one of these or leave as default. Redoing this command again, we'll choose IP addresses as the load balancing algorithm. Once this is done, we'll see the configuration again and say yes. PowerShell will now show us the output of get-net LBFO team. The team will be degraded at first, but after a while it will be good. All right, now that uh, we have our team, Let's check out our Windows features. By doing the command get Windows feature, we can see what's installed and available. Considering we are running Hyper-V server, you'll notice that role is installed by default, though things like iSCSI are not, but that's for another conversation. Failover clustering is not installed by default, and we can install that role using the command install-windows feature failover-clustering. After a while, the installation status will show. The success is true. Restart is needed. Exit code is successful and our feature result. Once ready, we can reboot using the command shutdown-r-t0. Once back, we can make sure the get windows feature shows failover clustering installed, though remember you must enter PowerShell for this command to work. And we see failover clustering is installed. Keep in mind you also might need multi-path I.O. if you're doing clustering and, you know, multiple SAN connectivity. If we look at get net adapter, we'll now see the team is created gig team and that it has 4 gigabits per second in link speed. Since we are running Hyper-V, we need to create a VM switch to provide access for VMs as well as the management OS. Keep in mind, if you have a system with a dedicated management interface, this will be unnecessary. Though if you are limited in ports, you will need to share the management OS and VM switch for communication. Get help new VM switch will show us all of our options. New VM switch gives us net adapter name, sim session, computer name, credentials, VM switch ID, allow management OS, notes, minimum bandwidth mode, enable IOV, enable packet direct, and enable embedded teaming. In the third option, you'll also notice the ability to specify the switch type internal and private. By default the VM switch will be external. For now we'll just move forward with the necessary items. We'll specify the command new dash VM switch dash name external switch dash net adapter name gig team. We can scroll back up and verify and then of course we also need to allow the management OS to be set to true. You do this with the dollar sign true statement. Once done, we'll get our status, name external switch, 
switch type is external, and interface description. If we do get dash adapter again, we'll see the new adapter listed for V Ethernet external switch. There is one last thing we need to do if necessary. Uh, if you're connecting to the physical network using the default VLAN, you may not need to do this. However, if you need to specify a VLAN for management, we can look at get help set dash VM network adapter VLAN. Typically, this is done to specify a VLAN for virtual machine, but is also necessary to provide for shared management OS connectivity. Set dash VM network adapter VLAN dash management OS dash as an access port dash VLAN ID and we can specify 1000. Once this is done, the teaming will be complete and the switch has been configured. IP config will only show us VEthernet for the external switch now, as the other ones are teamed and mapped to this you know, VEthernet Hyper-V switch. Going back to sconfig, we can modify the net adapter configuration, and we see the Hyper-V virtual Ethernet adapter, and we can configure it as an IP address, gateway, and DNS. And that's pretty much it for teaming a couple of NICs in Hyper-V, creating a VM switch, and adding a VLAN for management OS connectivity. In one of our next episodes, we may go a little deeper into, you know, Hyper-V hosts, all of the configurations available to them, um, setting up iSCSI and failover clustering. So hopefully we'll see you in that. Thanks for watching.